I've been meaning to make this video for a while and really just give you guys my experience on Paxil, my, my two year, my journey through Paxil and um, how it worked for me, how I actually got off of it, how I weaned myself off of it, the fucking trial and error of going through that and um, everything in the middle, man, um, what, even what made me get on it, you know, um, You're in a bad place in your life, you're depressed, you're anxious, whatever that may be. What drew me in there, um, I started having really bad panic attacks, like super bad panic attacks. I work in boxing, a lot of people know I work in boxing, I do interviews and stuff like that. Um, I had a job and, you know, there's traveling involved. I've never been a person who's been like a fan of flying, I've always had a fear of flying, but that's never stopped me before. I've been well over... 40 flights in my life I'm it's something that you know I've always you know I get on the plane a little bit of anxious and you take the flight you do it you man up you know that's that's the way I've experienced flying my whole life came I had to do a job my guy Ellie bought the plane ticket everything it's already settled I'm laying down at night all of a sudden man I just get this I literally had to call him and shout out to my boy Juan because he came through in the clutch. I had to have the the name on the ticket changed. I couldn't do my job anymore. That's how bad the panic attacks and the anxiety started getting. And it, it, it would take really long to get to the source of all of it. But um, around that same time, there was there was just so much going on, man. I really just wasn't happy with how I was living. And um, I had also just uh, broke up with my girlfriend who I had been with for four years. And it sounds so strange to me to say that. I guess you have to live life and experience it. But um, it's just weird, you know, because that's not something I, I, I would have never saw myself being that person who was weak, you know. And, you know, you just kind of, life will humble you like that. Life will truly humble you. It'll put you in a position where you realize you weren't who you thought you were when you had that sense of hubris and, you know, you're just living this this life or you, you have this idea of yourself, which is the ego, which isn't really your true self. And, you know, life will humble you and show you your true self. Anyways, that breakup really fucked me up badly. I mean, just to give a short, condensed version, honestly... Like, she was the only person that ever knew, like, the real me. And that, that might sound a little cliche, but it, it's just true, you know. Like, it's the only person I ever let see my real, flawed, weakened self. And when I lost that outlet to even share that version and those emotions and this, that, and the third. And not to mention, I just took a million things for granted. Literally, like, so much of my happiness was cut off. Like, not even so much, like, fucking the bulk of what made me happy in life. When I lost her, I really lost it. And me losing her was also my fault completely. So there was no one else to blame but me. So I, I really just took for granted. Like, I, I don't even know the mindset where I was to not have the foresight to see, whoa, this is going to fuck you up. Don't break up with this person. Which, that's what brings me to Paxil eventually. So I started getting the panic attacks, the anxiety, extreme depression. This is like I've had depression. I've always been sad. Just a sad person. I think all deep thinkers or people, you know, like, who really, I, I, I can't imagine even being happy and being able to have a, a deep thought. To me, those two can't even coincide and, like, coexist, because it's like, I've always been a person who's, you know, I've always had sleeping problems, um, you know, staying up late, you know, you start fucking pondering the universe and having all these existential questions, and um, this is something I can remember for almost as long as I've been like a sentient being where, you know, I've had ideas of emotions, you know, etc. Um, anyways, it was never something that impeded my actual life, you know. So at this point in time, it began to impede my life. I was paralyzed by fear. Fear was actually paralyzing me. I couldn't go on an airplane. Um, like I couldn't do anything. I would like, you know, the walls were closing in. I was crying like profusely and it was yeah, it was disgusting. Everything who I am and who and who I present myself to be to the people outside in the world, I wasn't that person. I was so in and, and also like um, among 
my inner circles, my friends, the the circles I involve myself in, that's not even the person, at least to me, that they know. I'm I, I'm the person that they come to for advice and blah blah blah, and they call me and we have a three hour conversation and I'm giving them all the gems, etc. You know, I literally had to go out of my way just to make myself feel better. I, I messaged and I text and you know I hit up a lot of my friends and told them like, yo, I'm not the version of me that you're accustomed to. I can't be there for you in my normal capacity. Not that they were asking me of anything, but just letting them know ahead of time, like, yo, if you hit me up and I'm just, like, not interested or whatever, I seem distant, this is why. You know, I, I felt the responsibility as a leader to convey that idea and to be open about what I was going through with them, you know, and my family, etc., you know, so on, so on. We get to the point where... You know, I go to the doctor, tell him how I'm feeling. You know, I didn't really have an idea of what I was going to get. Whether it was just therapy, um, though I, I didn't know if I was going to get Valium, Xanax, whatever. You know, I have like a very broad idea of, of what somebody gets when they're depressed or anxious. It prescribes me Paxil. Now, here's the part where I would say um, you have to be extremely careful. Here's where you have to be really careful because, man, I didn't do any research. Um, I immediately went into therapy, which was pretty good. You know, I was not, I, I mean, I never went to therapy in my life, but um, we got a therapist, psychiatrist, all that. And um, it's weird, you know, like, you know, <laughs> you think talking to a friend or, you know, somebody in your family or whatever, like, that's the same therapeutic thing. Like, no, it was weird. Like, I went to a therapist and the things they, that, that she said, Nora, her name's Nora, um, actually, like, helped out it was I, I don't know man i mean obviously they get paid to do what they do me just being such a skeptic i didn't yeah i didn't expect anything to come out of therapy but um it was actually really helpful and um i would suggest i mean me i have like the cheapest shittiest ghetto insurance out there so go for it man there is therapy for everybody in the hood you know like whatever it is you think oh i can't afford it no it's for it's free like there's more there, there's shit out there you can definitely seek therapy for whatever you're going through i didn't do any research on the drug i had no idea that i that i would grow later on to be addicted to this drug so i get prescribed paxil I start on it. And with Paxil, um, I start off, I think, I think I started with 20 milligrams, which would be, which would literally end up making me stay on Paxil for more than two years. And then later I would read and do research on how to get off Paxil. And I would read about people who've been on it for 10 years, you know, like that was scary to me, you know, now here's where Paxil is good, the pros and the cons of being on Paxil, all right? So when I first got on Paxil, it was like a super drug to me. I remember going up escalators. You know, I have a fear of heights. Um, just going places, being in large crowds, things I didn't necessarily like. Um, I had like a super, like I didn't care. But it was also a bad I didn't care. It was more like I wasn't afraid to die either. You know, and I guess like... Okay, so if I'm on a tall building or going up an escalator and I can look down, it's the fear of, oh my god, I'm going to fall to my death that makes me afraid. So the Paxil took that fear of, took that fear away. And it made me kind of be like this darker, fearless version of myself that was cool for that moment. Now, this was about four months in and, you know, I was able to do a lot of things, you know, um... I performed and did things, you know, musically and stuff like that, and I was on the drug still, and actually, not that the drug helped, but I was actually surprised at myself that I was able to get through those things. So, in terms of Paxil doing its job and alleviating anxiety, it definitely did that. Now, one of the major, major drawbacks of Paxil is it absolutely destroys your libido. Yeah, shit destroys your fucking libido, man. Um, 
long story short, just, you know, I, I met this girl at Comic-Con one time. Um, she was fucking smoking high. If I could literally post her picture in this video, I'd show you guys just to brag because, you know. But, um, yeah, smoking hot. Um, long story short, yo, pss, pss, we end up getting together. She comes over, you know, the deed is done. Man, when I tell you that, yeah, I got through it, I performed, but man, was it horrible. I mean, there was no orgasm, no nothing. I felt like a true fucking piece of shit. Like, literally, willing myself to have sex was the hardest thing in the world. No pun intended, it was the softest thing. It, it, was, it, it was a hard thing to even achieve, you know, so... Anybody who's thinking about getting on packs, so especially if you're a male, I don't really know how it goes with females, but um, if you're a male, yo, definitely something to think about. Um, yeah, man, that is, uh, it, it, it absolutely, I had to readjust my psyche and my body and kind of rewire myself in order to, to when I was going to be in a position where I had to perform with a girl that I would, you know, I, I now had a different I, I, before off Paxil, I would just depend on my physiology. Okay, we're kissing, boom. Uh, we're sitting next to each other, boom. She's naked, boom. No, that didn't work anymore. I had to get deep into my psyche and truly focus on what was going on in my body in order to reach a level that a regular guy could get just by looking at a girl naked, you know? So that's definitely something super important if... You're, you know, you're starting that Paxil journey and you want to know, like, what's going to happen to you. The Paxil neutralized that. So I felt, I guess when you're, like, a deviant person and then you become this fucking monk, you kind of feel pure. So I felt this purity of myself that, um, that helped me out for a time. I felt like, wow, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I was making friendships with girls that weren't based on sex and, you know, like, I was just doing things you know, a lot more pure, you know, and, and honestly, all of this was integral to who I would later become and who I am now as a person. I had to learn these things and experience what it was like to meet people and not have an insane libido and to build relationships that I made while I was on Paxil. Research, research, research. Um, I got to put this in the video somewhere. I totally fucking forgot it. I had no idea that it was addictive, man. I did not know that at all. I thought, you know, like, I've taken pills in my life. I, I didn't know this was going to be something that I physically couldn't stop taking. So, around my birthday, I had gotten really sick with the flu. And it was a couple days before my birthday. And I actually managed to get over that flu really quick. But... During that time, I had actually forgotten while those flu days were going to take my dosage. And at that time, I could probably make it to about two or three days off the dosage before I started to feel something that was noticeable, at least noticeable for me, because I had never experienced that. So there's still kind of that um, considerably normal, especially not expecting um, any withdrawals. The withdrawals start settling and it's my first experience with the withdrawals and it's terrible terrible if, if if i could imagine hell that's what the fucking withdrawals were like if you've ever seen leonardo dicaprio in basketball diaries like, like that's the withdrawals like it's fucking hell i i i, I experienced a psychosis that i never thought like my eyes were completely sensitive to light my ears, I felt like I could hear for miles. I could hear like a fucking pin drop. I, I, I was in a room far away, completely in darkness. Fans on, motors running, just so I couldn't hear somebody watching TV in the living room. Um, world just turned upside down. Like literally, I like I, I am at, like the withdrawals from Paxil was what I imagine being tortured in hell by Satan is like. That's how bad it was. That's literally how bad I would describe it as. And uh, that exp I had no idea that it was from the withdrawals. I didn't know that not taking the pill was doing that to me. So this happens all around the time of my birthday. I, I completely miss out on a birthday party I was supposed to have. I believe it was my 28th birthday or my 27th. I really don't know. It, it was probably my 28th birthday. 
Yeah, I totally miss on it. Um, I get I get rushed to the ER. You know, they're they're putting IVs in me, this, that, and the third. Crazy though, these fucking doctors in there, they, like, it didn't even occur to me. You know, I'm on Pedialyte, and they're giving me all kinds of stuff, and like, they're bringing me back to life. And and, and like, I I tell them I'm on Paxil, and they don't. And it's all over the internet. They didn't give me any help or even suggest that it was that, knowing that I was on 20 milligrams of Paxil. Get home, pop the pill back in, feel like a brand new person. Again, me not taking it serious, the same way I usually do. I'm thinking in my head, I could survive, you know, two or three days without Paxil. No biggie, you know? Before I start getting into that place, uh, -uh you're wrong, your body starts needing it more and the more you take it the more your body needs it then like your brain chemistry needs like that fucking that serotonin or whatever is going on with the, the, with, the, with those SSRIs your body needs that shit and um one time I forgot to bring my pills with me traveling going upstate hanging out with my family you know I I realized when I get there I didn't bring my pills but I'm like you know what I could probably thug it out I could rough it I could do from Friday to Sunday go back home and be fine I was wrong, completely wrong. I was feeling like you literally, I, you literally become immovable at a point. Like it, it becomes a task for you to walk to the kitchen or something. And that's just the beginning, early stages. My, like, my tolerance for for the withdrawals had gone from like three days to like one day. And like this is at a point of you know being on the pills. I'm uh, probably over six months. And that's when things got really scary. I had to leave upstate. My mom had to drive me back to the city. Pop a pill in. Brand new person. This is when Paxil started becoming an issue for me. When I realized it wasn't something I could leave. And that just brought all those claustrophobic fears and all that commitment. Man, I have to travel with these pills everywhere with me I go. But you know what? I adapted. I got myself a whiteboard, some markers, the way I do things, you know, I set alarms on my phone when every single day that I had to take my Paxil, you know, I would mark down Monday, boom, okay, I took a pill. I had a different color marker for every single day, blue, red, purple, yellow, whatever, just to make sure. Some days I would have a marking there back when I did it with the same color marker and I wouldn't remember if I didn't erase it from the last day. And then my rule of thumb became, okay, it's always better to take to up the dosage than to lower it so if i thought i forgot one then i took another one just to keep myself balanced and safe this went on for a long time which really taught me it it instilled in me a sense of schedule and commitment and it was really hard for me to do that it was to really always have these pills with me and it was just it was just such a crutch for me like it really bothered me that I had and this is when the journey started where I wanted to get off of Paxil badly so at the time I still felt I needed it so I lived with it did what I had to do um, and there were also other side effects besides the libido and now me having to be aware that I have to take these pills every single you know day on the clock or else I go into this insane psychosis um, the weight gain I, w I had never been as heavy as I was when I was on Paxil naturally man on Paxil I was touching 180 easily and that was with working out no matter what I did running working out everything it was just keeping me so fucking fat and since getting off Paxil I've lost a dramatic amount of weight back to my normal walking around weight. Granted, I still work out the same, and I have the energy levels now to work out even more. I was so much more docile and domesticated on um, Paxil. Now I'm finally getting back into shape and where I like to be with my walking around weight. I'm much happier now, but keep in mind I had to go through that journey to be where I am now this isn't me making a video shitting on Paxil it's merely just the truth it's not for or against it's just so that you have a better idea of what you're getting into before you make that decision in your life uh, but like I noticed like some you know like I just really it was I was getting into a depressed 
place being the fattest and ugliest I had ever been in my life and I did not want to be in that place anymore. I finally came to a place where I where my life was a lot more stable. Over two years had gone by. I was still dealing with the pain and the loss, and, you know, not having, you know, this girl in my life really bothered me. Not only was she my girlfriend for more than four years, she was she was one of my best friends, you know. And people say, oh, my best friend. No, this is somebody I knew since I was 12 years old. And, like, you know, it was like a fairy tale kind of story. We fucking end up getting together, you know. This is somebody since junior high school and then falling in love later on as adults and being in touch that whole time and being friends. And, you know, so it, was, it still is hard to deal with that, you know. But, you know, life goes on. You deal with, you know, you take things as they come and obviously you have to psych yourself out a little bit you know you fill voids the best that you can at least i do and i was at a better place two years later to finally find the inner strength and will you know to say okay now i've lived a life with these pills i've come to a place where now i believe i can get off of them the walls aren't closing anymore i you know i, I had been mentally meditating to increase my mental health one of them was physical exercise. I had always been somebody who was physically, you know, always active, you know, was going to the gym, playing basketball, or whatever it was. Um, really, boxing had a huge role. And just, n not just the physical activity of boxing, the mental aspect. I started sparring, you know, training really seriously, you know, boxing. And that helped me just get that warrior mentality that if I could get through those hard rounds, those three minutes that I had gained this indomitable will to make it past other things that I, that I could traverse the lands of my mind more freely. Boxing helped out. I also, and this is something I've always been deep into, I had always casually meditated my dad's into martial arts i grew up on martial arts i had always casually meditated i started really getting deep into meditation and it became something that was part of my life where i where i where I, right now where i'm at in life i try to at least meditate at least once a week and it, it seems so easy because all you're doing is you know you're sitting down you're getting into your place but really it, it's so boring you know, at first, especially if it's not something you're accustomed to, um, your mind wanders, etc. But it's, it's actually really hard. You have to be disciplined in order to meditate because the the real discipline comes in your breathing. Because you're taking deep breath breaths in from your nose, which is hard, and then you're focusing on breathing out. Sometimes you're taking three at a time, and you're doing that while freeing your mind, listening to as far as you can go, closing your area, you know, being in the dark, spending time with yourself. And meditation became something I really used to in increase my mental stability and my mental fortitude. And boxing built my intestinal fortitude and everything else with that. And going to the gym and I was running on the treadmill and I was working out and I was breaking my limits. And I was training. I was training myself, you know. Um, and that really helped me get to a better place where I felt strong enough, where I had a strong enough will to finally say, okay, I'm ready to take this next step in life and get off of these pills. <sighs> so now I'm at a place, more than two years later, being on Paxil, the ups and downs, the pros and cons. And um, I've been meditating been boxing, I've been working out, and still dealing with the daily life stresses. So through my meditation and all the other things, I, I had been, you know, visualizing getting on an airplane. Or what would I do if I saw this person in the street or somebody I don't like? I get confronted, whatever it is, dealing with ways to control my anger, just the whole spectrum of emotions, fear, love, everything. And finding that zen within myself. I do that. Finally go to the doctor. Tell him how I'm feeling. 
you know. I actually weaned myself off pretty quickly on the internet. It says, well, on a, on a lot of the Paxful websites you go onto, it's like you should get off, damn, what was it, by 3%? It, it was something like you go from 20 milligrams to like 18 milligrams and 18 to 15, etc. Me, I went from 20 to 10. That was what my doctor recommended, and that's what I, what I was able to do. This is a journey I had to do on my own. My initial plans were to be weak, to go with my family, my version of weakness, you know, build myself into a rehab center, you know, basically, and, and you know, get off these pills while doing that. I didn't want to do that anymore. I went from the 20 to 10 milligrams on my own, alone in my room, really. And 20 to 10, losing that 10 mil, that was the hardest one. Later on, I would go from 10 to 5, which was a lot easier. But from 20 to 10 was really hard. Um, that one, I was in bed for days at a time. Like, just laying in bed the whole day. A lot of Gatorade, a lot of just eating whatever I wanted. Anything to keep my spirits up and just get me through it. I would say the amount of time it took was about, I would say to, to wean myself off from each dosage, not taking any pills to help myself out and going with day-to-day -day life. Um, I would say it took about a solid week. Uh, a week of a semi-hell. This isn't full on withdrawals, complete loss of your psychosis and you're just, you know, in a state of mania. No, this is just you're, you're weak. You're not in your best mind state, but if you're in a controlled environment, you can definitely achieve this. With my body and everything I had already learned up to that point, I was committed to getting off of these pills. I no longer wanted to have that thing where I needed to... <laughs> be committed to this pill anymore it just wasn't for me anymore it had done its job and it had run its course and it honestly become old to me and i didn't want to be one of those people who were on it for 10 plus years you know so going from 20 to 10 you know i did that and, and it took me about a week and if there's any more questions you guys can feel free to contact me about your paxo experience or how you want to wean off of it and I, i'll give you more details on that or maybe i'll even make another video of my weaning off process specifically you go from 20 to 10 and then boom i wanted to get off of it right there i remember talking to my dad he was real happy i was getting off the pills but i knew in my mind you know and, and i gave him a day i was like dad yeah i'll probably be completely off of them in the next three to four months I gave myself a very patient day. I knew I went from 20 to 10, but now I was going to have to live life on 10. So I lived life on 10 milligrams for a month. Where I was back to a place where my body had adjusted to being on 10 milligrams. And I had already started seeing major differences just in my personality, everything. I was becoming me again. I called this version of me 10 milligram Andy. I was, I, I was getting close to where I wanted to be and I even was liking this version of myself where it wasn't as bad finally a month passes I'm like you know what I'm strong enough to make the next step I go talk to my doctor um, I get now the green light to go on five milligrams so now I'm getting 10 milligram pills and I'm scoring them I'm breaking them in half and um, I'm taking five every night it's like a tiny pill now before I started off this big fat 20 milligram pill, I was scoring those to get 10, because I was afraid at that time, the reason I was scoring them and not just taking the actual dosage, I was afraid, you know, okay, at least if I score them, if I felt in need, I could take the other half and go back to my normal dosage, so going, going from 10 to 5 was a lot easier, it was a much smoother transition, it was still, like, I would say a weak process to get used to being on 10 milligrams to then being on 5, but the process was a lot easier. I was able to go about my daily activities, do things. I didn't, I, I didn't, when I went from 20 to 10, I felt the need to tell my friends and, and, and the people around me that I was going on this journey. When I went from 10 to 5, I kept it to myself. Not because I was keeping it a secret, but just because I, I felt internally good enough that this would be something I could handle on my own. You know, at this point, I'm anxious and more, like, really just happy to be out 
of the Paxil life. So I finally go to my doctor. This is after being on five milligrams for about a month again. And I'm expecting to go down to 2.5. I don't know. I just figure I'm going to half it and half it again. My doctor says, hey, um, you can go from five to zero right now if you want to stop taking the pills. And that's when I was just, I was truly happy, but humble. I remember, I'll never forget, you know, that first night, not taking that scored, you know, half a pill, five milligrams of Paxil. And just, man, making it through the night, waking up, um, no weird dreams. Which, by the way, yeah, another con of Paxil, extremely fucking insane dreams like uh, I don't even want to get into it just really bad nightmarish dreams you do not like when you're going through the withdrawal process really bad dreams like that's one of the ways I would realize if I hadn't taken my dosage anyways going from back down to five to zero no dreams no nothing waking up good but very humble I'm expecting the worst now of things I'm not going at this you know overly yeah i'm gonna crush this no my whole point of view is this is like i'm gonna get through it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna thank god i'm gonna pray i'm gonna meditate and if i make it great cool i can now go on my life long story short man um it worked out i got from five to zero which is taking no pills and this is where i'm at now currently it feels good I'm, I'm back to my regular self i'm doing things i like i'm able to take control of my life now and get back on the road to who i want to be paxel really impeded me on getting to my goals in life but it also helped me be the person that now i truly believe i can achieve those goals as so um that's my Paxil journey, the pros and cons of Paxil. If there's something you want me to elaborate on for you guys, I know I didn't get too deep into the pros and cons and maybe a little bit deeper on like the cons, the you know, the libido, nightmarish dreams, the the, the, the psychosis, the mania when you're on the withdrawals, um, the weight gain, uh, the insomnia, um, you know, overall being on Paxil I was a zombified version of myself. Never too high, never too low. I can never break any threshold. If I was sad, there were no tears. If I was happy, there was really no true joy. It was just like, ha, huh? you know, the, the, there was nothing that you could have a burst of emotion. I was never happy, angry, sad, anything. I was just flat. I was just existing kind of in this realm where nothing was good nothing was bad i'm just here i was just you know a spectator essentially at in my own life which you should never be you should be living your life through your lens and enjoying it <laughs> or not enjoying it as it comes at you not looking at yourself through a third person view and you know just being a spectator to the things that go on around you you know being indifferent and um i'm glad to be where i'm at now if you want me to elaborate on any of the things you can leave it in the comments and um yeah, man, we'll talk. And if anybody else is going through this journey and wants help on what they should do and just, you know, wants that friendly piece of advice from somebody who was on the drug for more than two years of his life, um, feel free to hit me up in the comments or the messages, man. One love.